Eagles insider Dave Spadaro with Howie Roseman here at the 2018 NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. Howie, I want to obviously get into the Combine a bit here, but I want to find you a little that's been our greeting? It's, just it's been like great. I a little nod. <laughs> Namaste. Um, has winning the Super Bowl been everything you thought it would be? The celebration after the game, yes. The parade, yes. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, the attitude, which starts with our head coach and our, and our owner, um, is uh, we got to get better, Dave. You know, I, I wish we were sitting here thinking anything other than that, but we got to get better. Um, we have to figure out ways to improve our football team. Uh, we have a lot of free agents. Uh, we don't have our typical number of draft picks. And so uh, it's going to be a challenge. And right now we're a little behind, but we're catching up. Last year you described the salary cap picture as tighter than usual. How would you describe it now? Tighter than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. But it is really. It's, it, you have some good challenges. You like these kind of challenges. Um, I, I'd rather not have these kind of challenges. <laughs> if it's like a option A or option B, I will take, you know, um, $100 million in a room like uh, to <laughs> other teams Option A is have. winning the Super Bowl and have challenges or having $100 million and not winning the Super Bowl. Uh, there's no other option I would take other than winning the Super Bowl to start with. But, yeah, it's challenging, and um, luckily it's because we have a lot of good players, and um, we're going to try to keep as many good players as possible here, and, and that's our challenge. And, and there's no excuse to say, hey, you know, we can't keep this really good player because of the salary cap, you know. That's my responsibility, and, and I take that very seriously. And so um, we got to find creative ways to get better. we got to find creative ways to keep our, our – our core of our team together and um, by the same token we have a lot of free agents we're going to lose players you know it, you yeah. develop relationships whether it's a short relationship or a longer relationship and you lose those players sometimes mm -hmm. how difficult is that for you i'll tell you what that's the hardest part of the job is that um these guys become your family and um you care about them it's emotional for you to make decisions you want to keep guys because of how good of people they are and we have a team of good people like we walk in, you know this, you walk into our locker room, there's not a stall you wouldn't go to of a player because you go, eh, I don't want to talk to that guy, you know, how he how he is as a person. And and we got to keep that going, but we're going to lose some good people. We're going to, we got to replace them with good people, but that's the hardest part, man. You know, even Donnie Jones this week retiring, you know, um, what a great career as a Philadelphia Eagle he had. And, and there's some things that, like, maybe people don't see. You know, Donnie Jones gave an unbelievably emotional speech to our team the week before our first playoff game that may have been a top-five speech breaking down the team of any player. And uh, he cared so much, and he wanted to win so bad, and, um, you know, you're going to miss that. But they're all always going to be part of the Eagles family. Sure. You know, a guy like Donnie Jones, I use him as an example because, obviously, you know, he announced his retirement. You know, he's always going to be an Eagle, and when you think about that team, you know, I, I know one day we're all going to get back together and celebrate and um, have something special, and he'll be part of that, and nobody can ever take that away from us, Dave, yeah. ever. And and there's more to come. We all know that. You've got this big, beautiful board in your office at the NovaCare Complex, and it's the the roster as it exists now. Mm -hmm. And Instead of talking about the players who may not come back, I'd mm -hmm. like you to talk a little bit about how you feel when you look up at that roster. How do you feel about the team as it's constructed here in, in early March? I've been doing interviews for an hour. That's the best question I've gotten Thanks, yet. Thanks, man. Uh, that is awesome. It's all about that who's not going to come here, yeah. That makes me smile because I feel like every other question is about who we losing and doom and gloom and what's going to happen. But there's no doom and gloom. There's no doom and gloom. You know, and it starts with our, our core guys. And, and when we sat here last year, we said, you know, our, our franchise defensive lineman, Fletcher Cox, who um, – we need him to step up, and we have tremendous faith that he will step up. And we have him under contract for a long time. You know, uh, our franchise quarterback is w working his butt off every day um, to come back better than ever. And, you know, let's not forget about the fact that this guy put us in position to have home field advantage, that this guy was around the team in that quarterback room helping Nick every day. You know, Nick, so we have this franchise quarterback, and we have the Super Bowl MVP. And um, you look at that quarterback room, we have a young third quarterback that we are tremendously excited about um you know we have guys under contract at the running back position who are tremendously productive and jay and Corey. um certainly when you look at at who made the play to score the game winning touchdown zach Ertz is under contract for a long time you go on the offensive line you know jp Wiz, kelsey brandon brooks lane those guys are all under contract yeah. you know and they're not free agents after this year um so we didn't even talk about v you know the wide receiver position being able to extend alshon you know nelson stepped up obviously we had a, a veteran presence there as well 
um, with Tory, um, and then the strength, you know, of our, of our defense starts up front and our defense alignment, and um, we have all those guys, you know, under contract. We have a couple of free agents at that group, and um, there are some positions in the back end that um, we have some free agents, and uh, the same token, like we have a guy like Sidney Jones who we took in the second round. We don't have a second round pick, but. We got Sidney Jones, who got an opportunity to play in that Dallas game, and we saw him every day and what he can mean to this team um, and what kind of player he can be. And so for us, like a guy like that who didn't really play this year, but we saw every day um, and saw him through practices as he came back, you know, it, it's exciting, and, and guys are going to take a jump. The other part <laughs> of it is the, the draft class and, you, and the rookie class, which also includes Jake and Corey. How much of a jump do you project guys taking and, and filling maybe some of the roles that are going to be open now that players leave? Yeah, and, and that's some of our conversations. Like, that's why you draft guys. You draft guys so that you're one that maybe they, don't, they can kind of get their feet wet and have some sort of role, but by year two where they have a full off season and they're not going through all of this that mm -hmm. um, they take a jump and and that's the biggest jump in this league year one to year two so all of those guys being able to get a full off season um, with our strength and conditioning staff um, and being around our coaches is going to allow them to even get a, a better jump on next year and we have high expectations for those guys and um, to fill more than the role that they had this year howie last one what will you it, what will constitute a productive scouting combine for you and for your staff? Well, first, it, it's the exposure to all these players. And, um, you know, I, I, I think my role has changed in that uh, I used to be able to go on the road and meet these guys at colleges, and I don't really do that anymore. Um, so for me, a lot of times it's the first time um, Coach Peterson and myself personally will meet some of these guys, and, and we're lucky to have a, an unbelievable scouting staff led by Joe Douglas and, and – um, you know, our directors there, Andy Weidel, you know, Tom Dono, Anthony Patchy, and Cunningham, and those guys who have met these guys, and we trust them like it's, you know, you or I meeting them. So, you know, we trust their judgments on that. But just getting to see these guys, and, and a lot of times, like, you meet them and you just go, this guy's an eagle. You know, he's just got that. And certainly our last two first-round picks, you know, with Carson and Derek Barnett, you just met the guy and said, this guy's an eagle, you know. And uh, I remember sitting across from Derek and meeting him for the first time and because he was an underclassman, and he, he had a pulled hamstring. And I said, so you're not going to run? And he's like, I'm going to run. And I said, are you concerned about your time? And he said, why? <laughs> People watch the tape, you know. like, And he has that kind of fortitude and that grit that yeah. reflects our Can't sense. Can't wait to see that kid in year two and three and four. Howie Rosman, have a great week. Thanks. And thanks so much for joining.